happens to the human brain when someone has a religious or mystical experience? First of all, praying, every single word is heard by Jesus Christ. And one way you can really confirm that is by opening the Holy Bible at random. That's the way God speaks to you. Now, what happens in the brain when someone has a religious or mystical experience? A new science is emerging in American universities. Its name is neurotheology. And according to its definition, it's the study of the neurophysiology of religion and spirituality. It targets the mind of believers. What happens in the brain when someone has a religious or mystical experience? The beginning of this science can be traced back to the early 1960s, when scientists discovered that a person's brain waves change when they meditate. But the net technical means of that time were too primitive to find the source of this change. The state-of-the-art CT scanners called CSPEC, Signal Single Pro Photon Emission Computed Tomography, had to come in order for scientists to be surprised to find that during prayer, the brain is strongly active in areas that verify those who narrate mystical and transcendental experiences. A series of neurobiologists, therefore, threw themselves into the study of these strange phenomena, trying to discover the source of religiosity in the human brain. Columbia University has created the Center for the Study of Science and Religion, the prestigious Journal of Consciousness Studies devo devoted an issue to research on how spiritual experiences are reflected in strange periodic activities in the human brain. While a series of books from major scientific publishing houses, MIT Press, University of Pennsylvania, etc., shed light on the subject. In 1998, Dr. James Austin published Zen and the Brain, in which he demonstrates that during meditation, the medial wall of the brain, which makes sure that we understand where we are in space and where the boundaries of a body are in relation to the environment does not uh, uh, show up, and it does not show any activity. Those parts of the brain that determine time and self-consciousness also remain silent. The results of his research were identical to the accounts of people who had this experience. Last month, University of Pennsylvania professor Andrew Newberg published Why Has Not Gone? God Has Not Gone. They used CT scans of Tibetan and Franciscan monks during deep prayer and found that it is the same parts of the brain that are active or silent during the time. In short, they used the data to find out what the religious neuron circuit is in the human brain. What those people felt, writes Professor Newberg, was not a mistake or a spontaneity. They were really biological events in their brains. Finally, in the book Religion in the Mind, which will be released in May, it's uh, analyzing how religious ceremonies affect the frontal wall of the brain and inspire optimism and creativity. The most surprising conclusion of all this that even, is that even those who identify as non-religious have such brain activities during religious ceremonies, although to a lesser degree, the same parts of the brain become active or otherwise soften their boundaries, according to Dr. Newberg. The science of neurotheology is still in its infancy. New technologies and research still have much to reveal, but as Newsweek magazine reports, this study alone is changing science itself. Despite the dominance of religion in many people's lives, writes Sharon Begley, it has been treated by science with indifference and apathy. The rise of neurotheology represents a radical change in that attitude. However, whatever light science sheds on spirituality, the latter will help the former. Mystical experiences, says Robert Foreman, professor of religion at Hunter College in New York, they can tell us something about the greatest mystery of neurophysiology, which is consciousness. In mystical experiences, the contents of the mind, mind fades away, Sense perception is eliminated, and what remains is pure consciousness. It tells us that consciousness does not need material objects and is not simply a byproduct of the sense organs. 
So does religion have a biological basis? No, answers Sharon Beckley. Science, despite its successes in the gray matter of our brains, will never answer the biggest question of all. Is it our brain network that creates God, or did God create our brain networking? Whichever we choose, it's a matter of faith. Examining faith? At the end of the last century, American scientists had transported a group of natives who until then were out of touch with the so-called civilized world in New York. Their goal was to study the perception that the primitives had of the wonderful Western civilization after taking them around the streets, showing them modern wonders of the time, buildings, sewage systems, gas lighting, etc. They interviewed each one, asking them what impression, what impressed them the most. The surprise of the scientists was great when all the natives answered that the most amazing thing was the workers with the special shoes that could climb vertical poles like today's PPC poles without actually using their hands. It was the first experience to show that the environment defines one's perceptual abilities above about the world. The natives were not impressed by the stagecoaches nor by the first skyscrapers of that time nor by the light that existed on every street. They knew that to climb a tree, one must use hands. The wonder was that some people could climb without them. Neurotheologists do the same to a large extent today. The miracle for them is not the belief in it, but the extreme experiences of meditation, the brain functions one has when ecstatic. The science environment they operate in, the tools they have, that alone allows them to see, except faith is more than transcending experiences, trans transcendental experiences. It's a coherent philosophical edifice that provides answers, good or bad, right or wrong. It doesn't matter to man's primordial basic questions. This structure does not fit under any microscope, not even in the cavities of modern CT scanners. It's not a simple brain function, but something much more. It is faith. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. I support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.